This is probably going to rouse some of you guys. This is going to ruffle some feathers, but I don't care because this is what I honestly feel is the best thing to do. And I'm sharing this with you guys because if you take the time to make something, don't you want it to be the best? Right. So that's what I'm trying to help you get is the best. Hey everybody, my name is Sam and welcome back to Sam Craft. Today I'm here in the workshop again where I usually spend hmm, three days, four days out of my week working. I'm just unpacking my next order of dowels that I got from Kling Spores Woodworking. I ordered these for utensils because it's a really big time saver and time is money so it's a money saver as well. I've got a big list of utensils to make, but that's not the primary focus of today's video. Today's video is talking to you guys about don't starve your wood. Being a YouTuber and being a woodworker and a maker and everything that you can label myself as, I have seen a lot of videos of watching other people make things and doing wood finishing techniques and everything of the sort. I have yet to see anyone do with their wood projects what I do. Where I'm coming from with saying quit starving your wood is talking about how you all finish your utensils, especially food grade items or things made to be used in a kitchen. This doesn't apply with furniture or trinkets or other things. I'm talking specifically to people out there that make cutting boards, utensils, bowls, plates, anything that you're going to eat off of, use to cook with, or otherwise, you know, I don't know, stick it in your mouth. <laughs> I don't know. You know what I'm saying. You guys totally know what I'm saying. So let me get some things unpacked here, get a couple of utensils knocked out, and then I'll come back to you and show you exactly what I'm talking about, my method and my solutions for not starving my wood. hours. It is 4.30 in the afternoon. I started this whole video project at noon and oh my gosh, these utensils take a long time to make. That being said, I do have something to show for my work and that's great and all, but we can now finally get to the point of this video where I'm telling you guys to quit starving your wood. What I mean by that is quit starving your wood for oil or finish. Whatever you use for your food safe finishes, do not just pour it on there, rub it on, wait 10 minutes, maybe do it a little again, wait 10 minutes, and say, hmm, that looks good enough. Now, this is probably going to rile some of you guys. This is going to ruffle some feathers, but I don't care, because this is what I honestly feel is the best thing to do, and I'm sharing this with you guys, because if you take the time to make something, don't you want it to be the best? Right. So that's what I'm trying to help you get, is the best. Okay, at the center point of this whole saga that I'm preaching about not starving your wood, there is one thing that I use, and it is this. A plastic box or tote. Since I make utensils, I bought something that's large enough for utensils to lay in that I can keep my oil in. If you look, there is oil in there. The kind of brown tint, that's sawdust, that's normal, it's not affecting the oil at all. This also enables me to create a bath for my utensils. So let's go ahead and pop the top on this. Let's put some utensils in there and let's give them a bath. There we go. There are a lot of utensils in here, as you can very well see. Next, I wanted to give an extra topping of wool in here since it is kind of low. The beauty of having a container like this is I don't have to fret or worry about spilling or wasting the oil. 
The oil I use for my utensils is expensive. It's $13 for eight ounces. So I wanna make sure I don't waste any. Once I have the oil in there, I can then kind of slosh it around carefully, get it around the edges, and pretty much just let the utensil sit. Put a lid on it so no extra dust gets in there. I can then shake it a little bit more, but this particular box is not waterproof. If I shake it and tilt it to where it splashes on the lid, it will come out and spill. That's not good. I learned that the hard way. So I am mindful of keeping the oil down there, but I'll give it a good shaking just to slosh everything around. Here we go. I'm not worried about them breaking. I build utensils for use. If they can't handle that, they don't need to be sold. For the sake of the video, I am moving quicker than I will once the video is off, just for you to know that. As you can see, the sloshing around gave everything a really good coat. If there are any dry spots, now is the time for me to fiddle and finagle around, flip the small ones over. That way everything can get coated all around real good and even. Let me finish these. All right, at this point, I set the box aside. It is free from getting dust on it. I can continue to work. I can just leave it overnight. And honestly, that's also what I do. I leave it just like this overnight. Everything sitting in the oil, leaving it overnight. I'm gonna play devil's advocate to the best of my ability and try and say and address some things that you might be thinking as you're watching this. And there are probably things that I thought in my head in the past that I've come to term with. Isn't leaving the utensils in the oil that long gonna mess them up? Well, if you're making cooking utensils for people to use, like real life use, if your utensil can't stand to sit in the oil that's supposed to protect it overnight, how do you expect it to survive in someone's kitchen in the real life? Ouch. You've gotta be willing to put your creations, your cutting boards, your bowls, your whatevers to the test. Are they gonna survive or not? You would much rather find out in your shop than you hear about it from a customer later down the road, or even worse, you never hear about it from a customer. That's the worst. Other questions might be, um, I don't know, maybe you're worried about using too much oil or is it gonna soak in too much and not really do much more at protecting it than just wiping it down would be? To that, I say, quit being cheap. If you're gonna make a product to sell for a customer, again, you're gonna give your product to a customer, give them the best. Quit trying to save money on oil finish thinking that it's gonna make a difference on your bottom line when honestly your reputation as a maker is at stake and that's worth a lot more, right? I'm not trying to come across as a jerk to you guys, but this is a subject and a topic that I feel very strongly about. If you are out there making something representing woodworkers and small businesses as a whole by selling your products, you should be giving the best to your customers. They deserve it, you deserve it, and the fellow makers who are represented also deserve it. So come on, do what's right. Here's a look at one of the utensils that set in the oil for a couple of days. This was my trial, my test piece. This was the utensil that I experimented with, built my template off of, and got my finishing technique down pat with. One of the things you might be wondering also is if leaving your utensil in the oil long term causes the grain to pop, and kind of makes you have to re-sand and rework and redo the whole process. In my experience, no. I make my utensils out of walnut, cherry, maple, and sapili. Those are the four woods that I've made utensils from. And I sand them to 320 grit finished sanding. I have not had any problems with grain popping or anything of the such, so I'm confident to say that you should not as well. That being said, do what I did. Make a utensil. Plop it in that oil, leave it there for a while, and see what happens. Same thing with your cutting board. 
Maybe take some scraps of your cutting board. Something that's representative of the finished product. It still has the laminations or the glues. It's got the sanded and the routered bits and all the fancy stuff you might do. Plop it in the oil for a couple of days. See what happens. It's well worth the risk that you put one utensil or scrap or something under and subject it to, then running the risk of honestly shipping out an inferior product. Something that may look great, super, and pretty now on day one. How does it look 30 days later? 60 days later? How does it look a year from now or when it goes to a different climate where the moisture is different and the humidity is different? This is something a lot of people doing cutting boards need to listen about. Wood moves. If you glue something and you ship it anywhere, it's going to react. I would highly suggest making it, subjecting it to moisture and weird stuff to see how it reacts. It's going to make you have a better product. It's going to make you a better maker and it's going to be good in the end. Hope you guys have enjoyed this video. It was not my intention to harp on you or to be uh, Debbie Downer or whatever. It's just something that I feel very strongly about and have a passion for. My point with a video like this is to make you as a maker or a creator or someone striving to sell something to make money better. I get no benefit by sharing my tips and tricks or my secrets with you guys other than a couple of pennies per thousands of views that YouTube gives me for ad revenue. So this is purely, I'm just trying to help you guys out. If you have any questions or comments, leave them for me down below. I read all of them and I like to respond to them and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. With that being said guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time in the workshop.